Hey, it's Mike with Tech TV. And we get a lot of requests lately about, I guess it's because we're getting into season here, about starting a paintball team and what it takes to start a paintball team and what are some of the things you can do to start a paintball team. And the first thing I'll tell you, if, you know, if, if you're looking into starting a paintball team, and especially if this is your first team, is don't start a paintball team. Just go join someone else's, okay? Starting a paintball team is... It's your worst nightmare, okay? I've started paintball teams in the past, and every time I do, I'm like, why the hell did I do this again? Um, it's a real easy way to get everybody to hate you. It's it's a real easy way to lose a ton of money, and when it's all said and done, uh, everybody forgets about you and they quit for better teams. So if, if, if you're looking to start a paintball team, the first thing I would suggest, especially if you've never played on a team before, if you've never started a team, is go and join someone else's team first. And see what they do right, see what they do wrong. And um, this way, when you go to start your own team, you can kind of take what you've learned from that first team that you played at and kind of apply it towards your new team. Okay, second thing I'm going to tell you is, now let's say, for instance, you've never, you've never played on a team before, so you go join someone else's for a little while, you see what they do right, see what they do wrong, then you go to start your own. Okay, first thing I'll tell you to do is to try to get organized. Okay, you need to get as organized as you possibly can even if it's just you starting out by yourself. Ideally, you want to have someone else with you on the ground level helping you build it up. But getting organized is one of the first things I can tell you to do. Um, some of the different ways to get organized. Uh, put up a little website. Um, you know, if you're going to have a, you know, create a team name, search around on the internet to make sure that there's no one else that has your team name. Like there's a zero tolerance. It's over here in Florida. Awesome team. I love zero tolerance. And I think there's like a zero tolerance in Michigan. Okay. If they go and play at the same tournament, life's going to get a little bit confusing. So make sure that when you get a team name that you go and search on the internet, search the APPA, make sure that nobody else has that name yet. Um, so, you know, another thing too, go ahead and get a website up. You know, if you can go to GoDaddy for three bucks, you can register a domain name, forward it to some, you know, Angel Fire website or something like that. Just something really basic, but definitely get a website up. Um, and something else I'll tell you to do is starting from the very beginning, um, get your local paintball store to call the warehouse and see if there's any jerseys that the, uh, that the distributor is looking to get rid of. A lot of times like the, you know, like the, the 06 and the 07 jerseys, they'll let those go for super, super cheap. You might be able to pick up jerseys for like $20, $25 to start out with. Now I know everybody likes the custom jerseys and custom jerseys are cool. I've got a bunch of them, but starting out with everybody wearing the same jersey, for instance, like this, here's a Reds jersey. Okay. This is the, uh, this is the 07 Reds jersey. And, uh, you know, I think my, my paintball store sold me these for what, 25, 30 bucks each, I think. Um, you know, so here's the Reds jersey. So pick up, pick up a jersey, you know, any of the ones that they're looking to get rid of and then get a bunch more. Here you go. So get, uh, you know, get seven, eight, nine of these jerseys. This way, as people start joining your team, everybody can start dressing alike. So when you show up to the field, everybody's wearing the same jersey all the way across. Now people are going to start seeing, okay, you know what, that looks like they're starting to start a team. Hey, what's going on over there? If you guys all show up wearing different stuff, you know, different jerseys, different shirts, then no one's going to realize that you guys are actually a team. It's going to be a nightmare to recruit. So that leads me into my next step on, uh, on recruiting. Okay. When you're going and you're recruiting, you know, travel to, you know, you're going to have to pull from, from several different fields. So you guys are going to have to travel to different fields. And, you know, when you're at the fields, have some sort of flyer drawn up. Here's the name of my team. Let's say we're going to, you know, new, new paintball team is going to be called the Woodchucks. Okay. We're going to be the Woodchucks and, um, you know, here's our flyer. Here's our team web address. Here's my contact information. Um, you know, we're going to be playing in the local tournaments. We're going to be playing in the national tournaments, whatever you want. Um, but, you're, you know, to start recruiting, you're going to have to start traveling to different fields, okay? And you may have to go and pull from maybe four or five different fields to start picking up decent players for your, for your team. Now, once you start building up um, a, a good, solid core group of players, and, and, you know, then probably what I would suggest from there is once you start picking up players, paintball players are, are probably the most finicky, ADD irresponsible, unreliable people out there. I put my players that want to join my teams through a 30-day probation period. Okay, I tell them, you know what, you want to join my team, that's cool. You're going to have to come to the practices for 30 days. You know, you got to come to the practices. You're going to have to come to the tournaments and help out in pod bitch. And, and after the 30 days, we'll make a decision whether or not you want to, you know, whether or not you think this is a good fit for you and we want to make sure that you're a good fit for us. 
But I, what I found is by not doing a 30-day rule, what happens is, is I get players call me on Tuesday. we got a tournament on Saturday we want to play on. Um, their gun's outdated. I overnight their gun. I get their gun back on time. I fix their loader. I fix their tank. I fix all this stuff for them. We get everything up and ruddy. We order an extra jersey for them. We get it overnighted back to us. They get all this stuff. They play one turn, and then they're gone. We never hear from them again. Fuck that. So... 30-day probation period. And you know what? If you miss a practice and you miss a tournament, then one of two things is either going to happen. Either A, um, you 30 days start over again, or B, go be someone else's problem. So be really selective about the people that you start off with. I mean, we've had players on our team that the easiest way to describe them, they were a cancer. They were negative. They were bitching about everything. They were complaining about everything. And by having a 30-day probation period, go be someone else's problem. Now half those kids don't even play paintball anymore. So there's, there's some of my philosophy there. The next thing, too, marker tech. You're going to need somebody on your team that knows how to fix guns, that knows how to fix loaders, that knows how to fix tanks and all that stuff. When, when you start getting ready to play in tournaments, you are going to see, you're going to see shit that's going to blow your mind what paintball players do to your gun. You're going to be like, Mike, I understand it. my loader is overheating. You take a look at it, it's got a staple in it. Okay, it's like, Mike, I understand my gun's running away. And then you find out that their trigger is set up on, like, hyper bounce, and every time you pull the trigger, it shoots 80 balls. You know, you're going to see... Um, tanks with stuff rigged onto them with, with everything stripped out on it. So you're going to have to go through and on your team, you're going to have to go through and inspect all of the guns, inspect all the loaders, inspect all the guns, inspect all the tanks, and make sure that they're ready for tournament. Um, you know, if, if you figure that out of 100 games that you would play, let's say you lose 40 of them. Well, if you lose 40 games and 20 of those were because of marker problems, either you know balls breaking or tanks going down or loaders going down or guns going down or whatever well if you can make sure that all the markers are fixed and they all work perfectly well then instead of you winning only 60 games now you're winning 80 out of 100 so having good gear and having a good tech is huge it's huge um something else i'll tell you too now once you start practicing i was on a team called deadly venoms and these this used to drive me nuts and sees my boy and i love the guys on deadly venoms but when i first started out on that team it used to drive me crazy I would go. They had me playing back, and when I would go to these, when I'd go to practice, I would shoot three cases of paint, protecting the front player that only went home shooting maybe two bags. So what I suggest is when you start practicing, do what I call a paint pool. What you do is like this. Okay, let's say you got five people on your team. All right. Everybody shows up with everybody shows up with one case of paint. Okay. Everybody shows up with one case of paint, and then what you do is after you know you inspect all the paint to make sure that none of the bikes are broken because you don't want a broken ball getting in through all of your guns but you know get yourself a caddy like this one and then what you do is everybody just pulls from this paint and shoots like they would in a tournament and when the paint runs out the paint runs out and then everybody goes home but this way this will prevent you know your back players from shooting three cases of paint while your front players may only shoot two bags it's not really fair spread the cost out through the entire team by doing the paint pool. The paint pool is going to save a lot of aggravation and the most importantly is you're going to be able to practice like you would play in a tournament. Last thing I'll tell you, the absolute, absolute worst place to communicate, to try to get your name out there is PB Nation. Stay the fuck off of that website, okay? PB Nation is full of 12 year old manic depressives with that, that their only thing that makes them get out of bed in the morning is to go and to rip apart other people for no reason at all. You see it in every team thread on PB Nation. Go look. Go. It happened to us. Look on rendition. We had these two fucking idiots, David Lepano and Chris Herdman. While we're trying to get our team together and this and the first thing that happens, you guys suck. You guys will never go anywhere. And then I got to explain to all my players, no, we don't just suck. We're new and we're starting out. Yeah, but this guy says we suck. Well, that's because the kid's a loser and this is the only thing that makes him feel better. Okay, tell him, yeah, we suck. We understand your life sucks, but you know, okay, you're right. You know, whatever. But stay away from PB Nation when you're first starting out, okay? You're not going to recruit players on PB Nation. I've never recruited a player off of PB Nation. I've been playing paintball in Florida for four, five, six years just in Florida alone. Um, you're not going to communicate with other teams. The only thing that's going to start is a bitch fest. And, and things are going to get misinterpreted and you're going to piss other teams off that you need to be your ally. So stay away from there in terms of having a team thread or anything like that. Having us on Widowmakers. We have one of our own players decided to go and rip apart some other teams for whatever reason. So I would definitely suggest staying away from PB Nation if you're trying to recruit, trying to get organized, trying to get your name out there. Stay away from that, at least for the first year, year and a half. Once you guys are doing pretty well and placing the top four in tournaments, then you can go in there and then you'll have all and then have your own little fan club of flamers that are going to come in there and talk shit about your team.